Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lacey. Um, I am the program assistant at the Charles Lindbergh House and Museum, currently working from my home office um, and not at the site today because of all of the snow that we are getting. Um, today's, w, or today's program is focused on the WPA or the Works Progress Administration um, that was enacted by FDR in the 1930s. So we'll be going over um, what kind of work was done at the Lindbergh home. Um, so on October 29th, 1929, the stock market crashed, plunging the United States into the worst economic depression to date. Um, before this happened, families mostly prospered. Men and women were able to invest in stocks and bonds, as well as put money down on automobiles, on homes, and other new technologies of the time. Um, after the crash, the unemployment rate reached its peak in 1933 at 24.9%. Um, you can see from the graph how it drastically went up and then went back down. Um, Minnesota's unemployment rate was just above the national average at 29%. In 1933, newly elected President Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed legislation titled the New Deal. Um, that was to help ease the hardships of the stock market crash. And in 1935, the Works Progress Administration was established. The program sought to reduce um, unemployment by providing jobs to millions of Americans. At its height, the, w the WPA employed 3.3 million Americans. Um, the program mostly um, employed unskilled men and women as well um, to carry out infrastructure projects. The program built schools, hospitals, um, it built storm drains and sewer lines, new bridges, it constructed airfields, paved roads, and planted millions of trees. Um, so wherever you look in the state of Minnesota, bridges, airports, anything like that was probably the product of a WPA program. In the mid-1930s, the WPA took on numerous projects in Little Falls, um, where the historic home is located and where Charles Lindbergh lived. Um, some of the projects in Little Falls included a water purification plant that is now City Hall, an extensive fence around the Pine Grove Zoo a recreational city park, and numerous construction projects at Camp Ripley. Um, one of the most notable projects of the WPA in the area was the boyhood home of famed aviator Charles Lindbergh. Um, in 1927, he made his historic flight from New York to Paris. And then shortly after, his, his home in Little Falls, Minnesota, had been badly damaged by souvenir hunters. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of photographs of what the home looked like after um, the souvenir hunters were done with it, but as you can see on the PowerPoint screen there, um, they did do some pretty heavy, heavy damage to the family car, which we'll talk about. Um, we do have an oral history from Martin Enstrom, who was a friend of Charles Lindbergh's, um, and he said, quote, people were just wild. They acted like they were mad around here. He landed there in Paris. The minute he landed over there, I loaded up a bunch of lumber, nails, and some padlocks, and I came down to the home. I boarded up the windows, went down to the basement, and put a big bar across the double garage doors, nailed down with some 20 penny nails, and was pretty well satisfied that they can't get in because we didn't want anybody in there. I hadn't been home more than a half an hour, and somebody called up and said, you know, people are in that home down there. I got in my truck, and I went down, and there were all kinds of people in there. They boosted a guy up and cracked the big window. Um, the souvenir hunters... Um, damaged the woodwork of the house. They carved names, which you can still see if you come to the historic home today and take a tour. Um, they broke multiple windows and took what was left of the Lindbergh's furnishings and even removed stones from the foundation. Um, the most heavily damaged item in the house was the family's 1916 Saxon, which you can see in the photo. The engine block was removed with a lot of the car's furnishings, exposing pretty much the skeleton of the car. Um, in 1931, Charles Lindbergh donated his boyhood home and 110 acre farmland his family owned to the state of Minnesota, where they began to do repair work on the house. Um, the WPA would take over the restoration of the home and the state park. The city of Little Falls approved the project on May 21st, 1936, and the work would begin shortly after. Between the home and neighboring state park, the project was given $23,777. Um, today, that would be approximating around half a million dollars that went into the home in the state park. 
The project employed 40 to 50 summertime workers, and upon the approval of the project, the house was given a new coat of point, a new coat, sorry, new coat of paint, numerous repairs to the grounds that included replacing the missing foundation stones. Um, the WPA also did quite a bit of work um, environmentally around the home. This included protecting the soil from erosion with rock walls and creating footpaths. In a letter from Martin Enstrom to Charles Lindbergh, Enstrom reported more than 21,238 trees were planted at the historic home and in the neighboring state park. Um, white jack Norway pine, box elders and elms were planted along with blackberry and hackberry bushes. Um, they were planted to attract the birds. And this is something that Charles Lindbergh wanted. He wanted the home to have um, kind of that park feel where families could go and enjoy. Um, the WPA developed the park for recreation. One of the first buildings to be added was the log kitchen shelter that's located west of the Lindbergh home in, Le in the Lindbergh State Park. Um, west of the kitchen shelter, a large granite water tower was constructed that provided water um, to a small restroom building and water fountain. Known originally as the kitchen shelter, this was one of the first new buildings to be constructed in Lindbergh State Park. Um, and it was even highlighted in the Minnesota Conservation Magazine. They described it as, quote, the peeled pine logs, the rustic doors, and the great stone fireplace make it a fine example of woodcraft. Behind the fireplace is a large stove for cooking purposes. Solid and well-built, the structure still stands today. The structure has also been replicated in Bemidji State Park. One of the last WPA structures to be built was the limestone water tower. Um, it was referred to by the WPA as the water house. It was constructed during the summer of 1939. It was built of native granite that probably came from St. Cloud. The tower held 5,000 gallons of water, which was pumped into the restroom, to the water fountain, and into the caretaker's residence. Um, the structure still stands today, although it is not used as a water source anymore. According to a 1937 progress report on the park development, shelters were built along foot trails to give protection in the event um, that visitors exploring the trails would encounter um, inclement weather, storms, what have you. By the time construction was completed, there were several shelters of various designs throughout the park. Um, but because of contact with the ground, shelters with um, significant wood elements decomposed and disappeared over time. The stone ruin located 100 yards north of the Lindbergh home is the only surviving park shelter today. Um, the restoration of the Saxon actually didn't happen from the WPA. Um, instead, Camp Ripley took on the restoration work and over 5,000 uh, man hours went into the reconstruction. Um, Sergeant James Pakula was responsible for the reconstruction of the six cylinder engine and they also had an entire battalion working on the car. Um, eventually, they drove the reconstructed Saxon back to the Lindbergh home where it is currently on display. Um, you can come see it at the house. Otherwise, we are at the um, Lone Eagle Car Club Auto Show every year as well. Uh, so the legacy of the WPA and our current conservation efforts, the WPA work was done on the Lindbergh home, had had lasting effects on the historic site today. You can come to the site and you can see where the WPA had the biggest impacts in both the home and in the park. Um, we even have a walking tour map that we can give you and you can go see all of it. Um, however, our work is never finished in keeping up with the historic preservation of the home and property. Um, there's a few photos on the screen here that we'd like to highlight. Um, and that is one of them being our conservation efforts to save the ice house on the property. The ice house has experienced some significant movement in the recent years because of soil erosion on the hillside. So we are partnering um, with MNH, or we're currently working with MNHS um, and the state to figure out how we can save the ice house safely and also deal with the erosion problem at the same time. Um, the second photo on the screen comes from a mudslide or the hillslide that happened in 2020 in the back of the historic home. We lost our wooden retaining wall. Um, and this took some work with FEMA to get that back up. And now we have a concrete retaining wall, hopefully going nowhere. And then um, lastly, the tenant farmer's house in the state park is slated to be destroyed. Um, unfortunately, it was just wasn't well kept over the years. And now it is a, a pretty... Um, unsafe building on the property. So that will also come down. Um, but we are doing big things at the historic home to ensure that we'll be here for future generations to enjoy. 
Um, this is a pretty short presentation, so if you have any questions about the WPA work at the Lindbergh House, please submit your questions below. All right. Well, you can always contact the site if you have questions about um, the WPA work or, or um, conservation efforts that are taking place at the historic home now. Um, come visit us in the summer. You can see the legacy of the WPA work as well as take as the WPA walking tour. Um, and we can show you some of those carvings um, that souvenir hunters le or souvenir seekers left behind when they couldn't find anything to take. Um, our next snapshot Saturday will be next month, the second weekend of next month, I believe, and that'll be on Charles Charles or yeah Charles Lindbergh um, conservation efforts around the world. Um, so we'll be talking about how his environmental work have has impacted um, the places that he went, such as the Philippines, um, Hawaii, and other places like that. And we'll also be talking about the legacy of his environmental work with his family, um, the work that his grandson does now. Um, yeah, so join us for that next month. Thank you again for coming. Um, were any of the stolen furniture ever returned? Um, not that I know of. Um, nothing was ever returned. It was taken. Luckily, a lot of the stuff was already moved into storage before, um, souvenir seekers came. Um, so I don't think the Lindbergh family lost a whole lot. Besides the car, of course. And none of the car parts I can remember were ever given back. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for tuning into our snapshot Saturday today, and we will see you next month for our next one.